getting ready for 2024. Well, the last thing you need when logging back in in the new year is a to-do list a mile long. So you wanna make sure before you log off for the holidays that you are cleaning out your systems. Specifically, today we'll be talking about cleaning out your HoneyBook. Not sure where to start with this? Well, think of this video as your end of year HoneyBook cleanup checklist. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Christy. I am the CEO and founder of DeSilva Life. I am a verified ClickUp consultant and a HoneyBook Pro, and our agency focuses on setting up these two tools for business owners like you. So with that, let's dive in to how to clean up your HoneyBook before you log out for the year. So it is one of my favorite times of the year, which is time to clean out our systems, do our digital declutter and prep for the new year. So I want to go through what our process is for clearing out our honey book and setting it up. So we go into a new year ready to go. Now this is in no particular order, but let's just start by clearing out the pipeline. So uh, let's go through, this is the time to go through your whole entire pipeline and be like, okay, who do I have to follow up with? You can see our pipeline might look different than yours. You can actually customize your pipeline if you do not know this. So there's another tip. It could be time to customize your pipeline. And then also it's time to clear it out. So go ahead and go through each stage and see, are there people that you have to follow up with? Now it is right before the new year. So I, for me personally, I'm not going to follow up with everyone right now. Some people are already going to be out of office. Some people are, and most of us, myself included, are like, okay, let's just get through these last few days. We're not thinking about who we're going to work with right now and who we're going to sign on for paying invoices, et cetera. So instead of following up with them, what I would do is say, okay, either you're going to go ahead and archive, right? So you can go ahead and archive and say, you know, no response. They're not a good fit, whatever that reason might be. And if you decide that you do want to follow up with them in 2024, what you could do is add a task to their project and say, follow up with John Smith and then pick a due date for it. So let's say we want to follow up with them on January 4th, then that is going to allow you to have that task reminder. So let's head back to the pipeline. You're going to want to go into projects, go into all of the different buckets and be like, okay, who do I have to follow up with? Who do I have to archive? Are there people stuck in the support phase, et cetera, that I want to go ahead and just archive them um, or move them to completed? Let's just go through and make sure every single person is in the right stage. The other thing that we personally do is we keep all of our completed projects in the completed stage. And then at the end of the year, we archive them all and start fresh for the next year. So you could see we also have like extended support and referral partners in here. Some people like to keep things in completed forever um, so they could see their total project count. Others like to archive them right after the project is completed. That is preference. There's no wrong or right way. For us, we like to see how many projects we completed for the whole year and then archive them all before the next year. While we're in the pipeline, let's talk about one other tip I have, which is naming conventions. So we suggest having a naming convention for the project type. So for example, um, either it's the client's first and last name, but typically because we're working with businesses, this will be the business name. So let's say it's Smith Roofing Dash, and then what the project type is. So HoneyBook Setup, ClickUp Setup, Hourly Consulting, etc. So when we go into projects, we can see what that exact project is, who it's for, and what it is on the outside of the pipeline. So that is tip number one in terms of pipeline cleanup. Tip number two is it's time to evaluate your smart files. So if you come into tools in my template, some of you might still be on legacy. Um, highly recommend converting everything over to smart files. This is the year for you. They are 
so, so amazing and elevated. It's going to be so worth it. If you need any support, you know where to find us. Okay, so here, if you didn't know already, you can actually add folders and organize your smart files. So first, I want you to go ahead and do that. Add folders. They don't have to be the same as these brochures, contracts, proposals, templates, invoices, old templates. These are also for, um, you know, our tutorials and stuff like that. So maybe it's active clients. Maybe if you're a photographer, it's wedding, newborn, portraits. Make these in a way that makes sense for your business and your offers, but you totally could steal this structure too. If you're also starting out with smart files, I suggest checking out the template library, the template gallery as well, and getting some inspiration and templates from there. And so now this is the time where you're going to go through each of the folders after you sort them all and be like, okay, what do I not use anymore? Do I want to go ahead and delete it? Note, it will be gone forever. Or do I want to maybe move it into a folder called old or not in use or something like that? You want to make sure that your HoneyBook is clutter free in terms of smart files so that you're not confused by what you're sending or you're always looking at ones that you no longer use anymore. So you can make that decision if you want to keep it for reference or you wanna get rid of it all together. The other thing that you wanna do is go through and maybe make the thumbnails um, cohesive. Maybe you wanna rebrand those. And then as you're doing this smart file cleanup, you do not have to do this right now because I want these to be quick and easy tips for you to get done before the new year. But if you're looking at your smart files and you're like, I really wanna update our service brochure. I really have to take a look at my contract and update some things there, whatever it is make a note in your HoneyBook or your project management tool to come back and revamp those files. I don't want you to take this on right before the end of the year because it can take a while and I don't want you to lose momentum and get stuck on that. If you have time, by all means, go ahead. But you want to take a look at your files and be like, is there anything that we have to revamp? We just did that with a few of ours and it feels so dang good. Okay, so that's tip number two, moving on to three. Okay, so we talked about folders. Now let's talk about emails and naming conventions. So first of all, we love emojis over here, especially when it comes to sorting, but you do not have to use emojis. I wanna talk about our email naming conventions. So we use emojis, so when you're looking at this, you can easily see, okay, the check mark is for ClickUp, this is a review email, HoneyBook is the honeypot, honey pot. Um, not a good fit, thumbs down, call, no show, call, check in, and then the uh, custom build, here's when we need them to review files or emails. Um, so anything that we want to be at the top of the list, especially in terms of we use these emails when we're in a client project, let me actually go back to John Smith and show you this. So if I come into Smith Roofing now and I go to click on here, when I come to templates, these are all gonna show up at the top. So that's why we do that in terms of naming conventions, bringing it to putting the zero one. But then when we're building out our client flows and setting emails, we like to put the offer name. So here, click up roadmap. Then you do zero, one, zero, two, three, four, et cetera. If you just put one, then 10 and 11 would jump up. So you have to do zero, one, zero, two. People also like to do 1.1, 1.2, 2.1, 2.2. You can find something that works for you. It is your naming convention. And then dash and what that email is. So you can see here, click up roadmap, contact form autoresponder, follow up one brochure, follow up two brochure, et cetera. And you can see the other ones we have here as well. HB custom build, inquiry, et cetera. So this not only makes it super easy when you're going through and reevaluating these emails, but also when you're building your automations. So take this hack, build naming conventions. You are going to feel so good. Okay, two more tips for you. So the next tip is going through and evaluating your automations. So come into your automations and say, are there any things, again, you can see our use of emojis here, are there any things that we have to revamp in our automation? So take a second to pop into them, see here, you know, does this flow feel good? Is there anything that we want to revamp in here in terms of the process? Do Are there automations that maybe I don't use and I wanna go ahead and delete them? Again, remember you can't get them back after you deleted them. So you can also put like old um, if you wanna reference it. 
So taking the time to review the automations and decide if you want to change the name, delete, rework. And then again, you can put a task in your HoneyBook task section that says revamp automation and put that as a project in the new year. And lastly, the last tip we have for you is schedulers. Now is the time to go through your schedulers. And first of all, evaluate, do you need all these schedulers? Can you combine some? Maybe you need more. Let's go through, through and revamp them if needed. And then let's go ahead and set our new ideal schedule. So this is where you'll be like, okay, what worked for me and what didn't in 2023? Do I like where I have my availability for calls and kickoff calls? Calls, check-in calls, consult calls, discovery calls, etc. Now's the time to reevaluate your schedule and say, maybe it's time to do something new. Maybe you love your schedule and it works perfect. Amazing. Kudos to you. I know that I am adjusting my schedule in the new year. So now's the time to do it. Take action. And last bonus tip, actually, HoneyBook just released an out of office responder. So you can now come into my account and set up your out of office message. So if you set this up, it will send auto replies. You can do all incoming activity, or you can choose if it's just the contact form, scheduler, lean form, meta ads, or projects. You can edit this message and then say, I am out of office from blank to blank. So as you can see, this is new. I am super stoked for this. I usually had an automation you could see in here that would trigger when anyone inquired. So out of office just for custom HB build or all services. But now thank you, HoneyBook, for making our lives easier and having it in our personal settings. So this is in your personal settings. So you can do this. Any other team members you have that are on projects, we suggest having them set it up as well. And that is it. Cheers to a new year. Let's go in with clean and organized HoneyBooks. So I hope that video was helpful in showing you how you can clear out the clutter of your HoneyBook and give it a nice reset before the year. So when you log back in, you're ready to hit the ground running. If you are brand new to HoneyBook or maybe you've been using it for a few years now and you know that you want to really set it up and maximize all the amazing new features, I want you to go ahead and check out our HoneyBook course. I will link it in the description below so you can check out the page and get all the details you need, but this is really going to guide you step by step through everything that you need to do to set up your HoneyBook right, including mapping out and crushing your client flows. We also offer consulting services, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video. So if you don't have the time or energy to do it yourself, we do also provide custom HoneyBook setups where we do all the heavy lifting for you. You can always go to desilvalife.com slash contact to send us a message, let us know you're interested and we'll give you all the details you need. With that, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you want to stay in the loop about all the HoneyBook content and videos coming down the pipeline. But again, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.